calm, I'm getting excited, I'm getting nervous, right? Fear. Alright, so why is he sweating? Butterfly. Same thing. He's getting nervous. That's where Dr. Sweat lands. Okay, so let's figure out what fight or flighting does to these systems. The digest system, when you fight or flight, it goes uh, it turns off, right? I, I don't rest and digest when I fight or flight. So I turn off the, the cephalic kind of response. My urinary system, uh, off, right? You don't want to stop and pee in a fight. Not good. Reproductive systems, uh, hopefully off, right? That's a lousy time to think about that. <laughs> And you look funny when you're fighting with erection, right? So you basically turn everything off when you're fighting the fighting, right? So this one, we actually talked about this term. What's happening to my blood glucose levels in fight or flight response? They go up. So give me some words for that. What do you call it when you're taking sugar out of storage and putting it into your body? Glycolysis. Well, I know it's going to be a lysis word. Lysis means it's going to come out of storage. And what am I taking out of storage? Sugar from my glycogen. So it's going to be glycogen lysis. I'm going to take sugar out of storage and start flooding it into my body. Why do I need sugar? Save energy to burn. Energy to burn. Okay. So number three, I'm going to start doing glycogenolysis. What's making that happen, though? What does stress, how does stress do this? Cortisol. Cortisol. Very good. You learned, you remember. So cortisol is a glucocorticoid <coughs> causing my body to flood with sugar by doing glycogenolysis. That's the stress response. When you get stressed, you get sugar, so you go fight somebody. So you do glycogenolysis and cortisol. What order does that go? Like a lessons. This is first. This causes this. Which is the Makes sense? Okay, tell me why his mouth is dry. Right, that's digestive. I don't need to eat while I'm fighting or fighting, so I don't make saliva. That's why the sympathetic response dry mouth, cotton mouth. <laughs> Why you always have to take a drink when you're nervous? That, that's this idea. All right? So he's doing fight or flighting and getting his body ready to fight by flooding his body with sugar. Hey, okay, number second part. Okay, so what the name is is rolling on his body? What's he gonna eat a lot of? Okay. Oxygen, sugar, make ATP. There'll be some water, right? Blood flow, all those things you've been learning, right? So basically, air and blood. And you're also producing lots of waste. And lots of waste, right? So that's going to lead us to question two. We want to help his unloading of oxygen from the blood to his muscles. I think that's a graph that's on your final. Yes, indeed it is. Let's make that damn graph one more time. Let's see. If I remember right, it's a here. Set saturation there. It looked like that there. Remember this one? Yeah. Okay. The worst one. So he is exercising. That means he's hot. He has lots of acid. He's making lots of CO2. It's going to shift where? Right, right. It's going to shift to the right or down, depending on how you want to argue the point. Which means now there's a greater difference as it goes down. So it's going to unload more. Right? Unload more due to more heat, more acid. Okay. When my body's getting hot and acidic, I'm going to shift the graph to the right and unload more to my from my blood to my body. More CO2, more acid, more heat. Make sense? Yay! What was it going to look like? That's what we just did. So why are his muscles? Ah! Told you how to do that. All right, I'm still here. Why are his muscles feeling burning? Acid. Acid. Right. That's the anaerobic respiration. Start doing lactic acid buildup. Right. So that means it's before then. He's really getting hot. So he has to keep cool. How does he remove all this waste, though? He's sweating. Yeah, but sweating keeps you cool. How do you waste? Right, nitrogenous waste is pee. So sweat takes water. The pee takes water. Which water do you want to use? That's the problem, right? So your body either has water to sweat with or water to pee with. 
You can't use the same water twice, right? So he has a conflict between the need to keep cool by using water and to remove waste by urinating with water. So what did he do to help with the conflict? He drank more water. Drank more water. If I have extra water, then I can use it twice, basically. I can pee some and sweat some. If you don't have extra water, your body has to pick one of those to stay alive. So if you get hot in summertime, which of those two things do you keep doing? Sweat. You keep sweating because heat will kill you, and then you just pee less and less and less over the summer because your body is keeping the water to keep cool. So hydration, I have to flush the water both ways. Make sense? Okay. His heart race is still high. Why is it still high? He stopped. Get rid of waste and get oxygen again. 231, I still have to get the CO2 out. Get the acid out, then get oxygen replacement. Wouldn't that be something we did just now, like acidosis alkalosis? Yes, which is what we're going to do right now in number two here. Oh, okay. But changes in his blood chemistry happen. Oh, acidosis alkalosis words. Oh, goodness, those are on your final two. Let's go through that. <laughs> so, we had. <laughs> So we had lactic acid buildup, right? His muscles were burning. So we're going to write the equation here that you should know by heart by now. Right? Remember this equation? If not, think again. So it fits lactic acid buildup from the metabolism of his muscles. Hint, hint. Which side would that go on? Right side. So this value would be going. Up, right? If I'm making lactic acid, but I burn my energy, that's going to be a metabolic problem, right? And I'm acidic, so therefore I'm in metabolic acidosis. By logic, right? How does he? How did he compensate in this? He took the acid from here. He put it to his lung side, so he has pulmonary or lung compensation, respiratory compensation. And what did his breathing rate do? Increase. It went up. So I'm going to hyperventilate. <laughs> he panted in the race to blow away the acid his muscles were producing. Right? So he did a respiratory compensation. We say a left shift hyperventilation. Those are all the same. Make sense? So his muscles got acid over there on the right, and he sent the acid to the left to blow it away. That's why the breathing rate went up. Make sense? Yes. Yay! <laughs> All right, so let's see. Last part. All right, he's finally returned to normal. That's nice because he's in great shape. Let's figure out number two, though. This is not your test. He has one loss. On his endocrine system, let's do water. So he's dehydrated, right? He's lost water by sweating. So let's go through that. If he's dehydrated, there's going to be a graph you have to know, right? Let's see. It looks something like this. There's the water, a bunch of time over here, and his water went down. What does your body do if your water runs low in your body? Increase. Increase. ADH should be the best choice. What does ADH tell your kidneys to do? Yeah. Oh, reabsorb more water by making channels, and therefore you're going to reabsorb more water. So his kidneys would reabsorb more water from his urine to keep the water in his plasma by making more ADH, making more reabsorbed channels, aquaforms. So your endocrine system would tell his urinary system. Reabsorb more. He can also do the aldosterone if you want to. Aldosterone would kick up, reabsorb more salt. Okay? And what's that do to his pee? If I'm reabsorbing more water into my body, my pee would have less water. Concentrated. Uh, so more concentrated, be less of it, right? So less volume, more concentrated, darker. If you know that from doing anything in the summertime, you pee less and darker. Or if you had a flu in bed for three days, you barely pee at all. Really, think how dark it was. Right? Yeah. So, why only drink small sips? Why not just guzzle everything? No, no, no. Let's do some ECF, ICF metabolism, shall we? All right. ECF. Is this one we should know for a test? That's helpful. 
Okay, why do you know the ICF was? What was that? That's a cell, right? The ECF was what? Outside the cell. That means a plasma and the interstitium. So when he drinks water, which compartment gets the water? The ECF. Because everything I drink gets absorbed into my bloodstream or between my cells. So I'm going to add water. I'm going to make this more watery. That's even English. And my ECF. Remember, the ICF doesn't change. The ECF does. So now the outside is more watery. The inside stays the same. Osmosis is going to tell you the water is going to go eventually where? Exactly. It wants to go into here. Because of osmosis. So what will your cells do if I put too much water outside of them? They'll start to swell and explode. That's what you learn in biology 112. Right? That's a hypotonic IV. So if he drinks too much water too fast, the ECF becomes watered down and therefore it inflates his cells. Is that a realistic concern? It, yeah, it actually happens in marathoners. Um, they used to hand you know, the water bottle to marathoners and they'd watch it about half a mile down they'd be passed out. Because what would happen is they'd guzzle the water, they'd lost yeah. water and salt. They just put this water back in. They become hyponatremic, they call it. Their cells begin to inflate, their nerves turn off, and they basically pass out. So now what they do is they put in those little cups they just throw around on the ground. Right? The idea is you take water slower to get your kidneys time to flush the extra water out and retain our cells. Or you do a sports drink, which has the salt built in. Yeah, but they call it hyponatremia. If you get pure water, someone who's sweating a lot, it actually can cause your blood cells to get too big. So it can happen. It usually takes a lot of water, like, you know, Gallon kind of water, not just a normal sip, but a lot of water. Did yeah. you say that would be? A, did you say it would be a hypertonic IV? This would be hypo. Yeah, this would be hypo. Because it has less salt than the body. Right. You just can draw that and say more or less. I'm okay. So drink small sips so you don't do that. Okay. Ooh, wow! Osteoblasting class. Hey, remember those? What did glass do? Glass build. And class destroy. Good. Remember something. So what tells the what tells these to do what when? Hormones. And those hormones are based upon blood calcium balls, but also something else. Wolf's law. Wolf's law, right? So calcium tells them when to build or not, and Wolf's law tells them where. So notice I said his arms. What was he? What sport was he doing? Oh, yeah. Does that use arms? Yeah. yeah. So if I want my arms not to break, I need them to get what? Oh, yeah. So you would expect his blast to turn on his arms by Wolf's law. I need to make my arm bones get thicker to keep them from snapping every time I row. I will class the other ones I'm not using to build the ones that I need. Right. Assuming my calcium levels are normal. That's why they call old ladies who are thick. Yes. You didn't do what? Oh, you know, that's right, you're in Sam's class. Yeah. The post stamp activity? Yeah. 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 You didn't have that one? What, was, what did you say? <laughs> that's why I just need to Old ladies with weights. weights. Yeah. Well, I'll say for Right. It, it can't help. Yeah. 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 So, well, your nine year old wants to play video games all day long on the farm, and his dad kicks him outside. That's why. Right. Off your lazy butt and build some bone, man. All right. Okay, so let's do number five. Remember sphincters. So what skin color is Jim when he's hot and bothered? Red. 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 How, did you, how did he get red? Blood. Blood flow. How do you get more blood in the skin? Open the sphincters, right? Those sphincters are open to make more blood flow to his skin, making him a red, rosy hue color. Also remember that your sphincters open to bring more nutrients to the cells, remove more waste from the cells. Back in 232. Capillary. Capillary. Pre capillary sphincters. That's what allows. Local control. Bringing in nutrients. Right. So you're gonna over, you're gonna inflate basically these capillaries, your lungs, all that. Makes sense. Believe it or not, you learned quite a lot in a year. Now fifth grade. Okay. Or what? Thousand dollars with tuition books, right? Or. You would turn on class, if you didn't have enough calcium, you would turn on class the bones you weren't using. So, for example, some like leg bone you wasn't using it would be destroyed to build these bones. Assuming he's not using it.